just as a warning, making silicon tetrachloride is extremely dangerous and silicon tetrachloride itself is very dangerous as well. So for these reasons, I highly suggest that you refrain from making it yourself. And with that being said, we can get on with the video. The major use of silicon tetrachloride is to make extremely pure silicon. It's used because you can take impure silicon, convert it to silicon tetrachloride, and the silicon tetrachloride is a liquid so it can be distilled several times to increase the purity. This highly pure silicon tetrachloride can then be converted back to very pure silicon. This polysilicon is extremely important for making certain types of solar cells as well as semiconductors. I'm interested in making the silicon tetrachloride because I find it interesting that it's a liquid but when exposed to moisture it reacts to form silicon dioxide also known as sand. I thought that this might be interesting so I decided to give it a try. Another thing that's possible to do with it is to react it with methanol or ethanol but I won't be doing this. Especially with methanol it's extremely dangerous and it can easily blind or kill me. It forms a liquid that has a lot of vapors and if the vapors touch your eyes it will react with your eyes to produce hydrochloric acid and sand which will blind you. So you'll essentially be getting sand and acid in your eyes and on top of that if you breathe it in the same thing will happen in your lungs and you'll have a big problem there too. The ethanol version is safer but I still decided not to make that either. So this is the setup that I used to make my silicon tetrachloride. I needed sulfuric acid, silicon powder, muriatic acid or also known as hydrochloric acid and some chlorine pool tablets. The amounts of each that I used was kind of arbitrary, I just made sure that I could generate more chlorine than the silicon I had. I also used 10 grams of silicon which was extreme overkill because according to my yield I only used at most 2-3 to three grams of it. So on the left we have our chlorine generator with gas bubbler, on the right we have a condenser column with our collection flask hidden behind the pool tablets and in between connecting the two we have a reaction tube. Chlorine is generated on the left side, goes through the bubbler to dry it and then it passes over hot silicon in the reaction tube. This produces silicon tetrachloride vapors which travel to the cooling column and are recondensed into liquid form. On the far right there's a trap with dilute sodium hydroxide to collect any silicon tetrachloride or chlorine that makes it through. To the chlorine generator I added an overkill of 90 grams of crushed up TCCA tablets. And then above I filled the addition funnel with a mixture of 50-50 hydrochloric acid to water. And then to my test tube gas bubbler I added concentrated sulfuric acid. The septum is fitted snugly to the tube and now our chlorine generator is complete. I then weighed out an incredible overkill of silicon metal. Then with some difficulty I put it into the reaction tube and sealed it. This is the entire setup prior to running the reaction. The entire apparatus was totally sealed to the outside and every joint was lubricated with a little bit of sulfuric acid. So before we heat up any of the silicon in the reaction tube, we bubble some of the chlorine to flush the entire system with chlorine gas. We want to make sure that there's no air left in the system before we start making the silicon tetrachloride. Once this is done, using a blowtorch, I started to heat the silicon. And not too long after you can see the beautiful production of water vapors which was quite unfortunate. You can try drying your silicon before using it or you can just be like me and roll with it and accept the loss of yield. You can see the silicon start to glow red and a white vapor come off. This is the beautiful production of our silicon tetrachloride. The reaction happening here isn't too spectacular, basically the silicon reacts with the chlorine to form the silicon tetrachloride. You can see some of the wonderful vapor coming down towards the condenser and hopefully condensing. Unlike I did, I highly recommend using ice water for your condenser column because as you can see some vapor still makes it past the column. I keep heating the silicon but my flow of chlorine is quite slow so you don't actually see it glowing red too much. However occasionally it does glow a little and some sparking occurs but for the most part it just looks black. 
Soon the vapors that came over turned a pink red color. And here you can actually see some drops of the silicon tetrachloride coming over and the rate is quite slow at only about one drop every two seconds. A few minutes later I turned the tube 180 degrees to expose the lower silicon. And then just like before I kept heating along the whole length of the tube. In this experiment, I found that the amount that you heat it really isn't the limiting factor and it was very easy to heat it up to the temperature that's required. The major limiting factor was really the rate that the chlorine gas was generated. However, when the rate was increased, the condenser was easily overwhelmed. This is why I highly recommend using ice for the condenser. Because I didn't have efficient cooling power, I had to keep the rate of chlorine generation pretty low, which made the rate of generation of silicon tetrachloride quite low as well. This was my final yield of silicon tetrachloride. I didn't actually measure the yield, but it's at least about 10 milliliters. As I said before, this means that only something like 2-3 to three grams of the silicon was used, so there was quite a bit of waste. The apparatus was dismantled, but the silicon hadn't cooled enough, and so the moment it was exposed to air, it started to burn. Also, to be needlessly dangerous, I removed the condenser, and I let the residual chlorine in the generator pump through the reaction tube. This made a nice little cloud of chlorine, silicon tetrachloride, and hydrochloric acid, and for obvious reasons I don't recommend doing this. To clean up the silicon tetrachloride, I passed it all through a pipette with cotton at the bottom. I'm not exactly sure what this red stuff is, but it's particulate that's in suspension so it can be taken away by filtration. You can see here that when the pipette is lifted, it's a clear solution that's dripping out the bottom. And just to make things go faster, I occasionally use the pipette bulb to apply some pressure. So in the end, I'm left with a nice clear silicon tetrachloride. Note that in the bottle, it starts to become a little cloudy, and this is because it reacts with water in the air in the bottle and forms silicon dioxide. So now for the fun stuff where we put the silicon tetrachloride into some water. The reaction was much more pleasing and relaxed than I thought it would be. I thought it was going to be quite exothermic and violent. So using a syringe, I dropwise add it to the water. Most of it's actually floating on top of the water and reacting with it to form silicon dioxide. The reaction occurring is shown above where the silicon tetrachloride reacts with water to produce silicon dioxide and hydrochloric acid. Once it's all done reacting, you can see that I push it and a little layer of silicon dioxide falls down. So here I show the reaction from above so you can see the silicon tetrachloride reacting with the water. As more is added, you can slowly see a layer developing on top. And to make it a little more exciting, I'm going to speed it up to about 8 times speed. And when it's totally done reacting, we're left with a thick but delicate layer of silicon dioxide. I made it fall to the bottom, and then I poured out the water so that I could recover it. So here we have the silicon dioxide that I made. As you can see, it's very fragile and easy to break apart using your fingers. And just as a final demonstration, I put a little bit on a watch glass and let it react with the moisture in the air. You can see that as it reacts with air, more and more white silicon dioxide is formed. And of course the vapors that you see coming off it is hydrochloric acid. So after we leave it out for a while, eventually it all becomes silicon dioxide. Once it's all reacted, I use the spatula to scrape a little bit off. What's left here is some reasonably pure silicon dioxide. So that's about it for this video, but if you have any suggestions or comments about any future videos you'd like to see, just leave a comment below and I'll be sure to check it out. Also, if you get a chance, you should check out the channel The Chemistry Shack. He was the one who suggested to me to make silicon tetrachloride, and having already done it himself, he was able to help me when I ran into a few problems and had a few questions. So if you're into chemistry, he will definitely have some videos that you'll find interesting.